Chris mentioned the d demographics of India, how uh, the half population is under 25. We don't have a similar demographic here among our speakers. We, we, we only have one speaker, I think, under 25, and that's Brent Cook here. Uh, don't be fooled by the gray hair. He's been buying gold stocks for five years, and uh, he actually has been in the business for more than three decades, a very experienced uh, geologist, mining analyst. But um, personally, I don't really care about any of that. He plays beach volleyball, as do I, and that's, that's what matters most to me. So please welcome a, a, a beach volleyball player who also knows something about the mining business. Good morning. Uh, thank you all for coming. Um, I'll make a quick, I want to make a quick comment on this conference. Um, I do a lot of conferences. Uh, this, in my view, is probably one of, if not the best, resource-focused conference for retail investors out there right now. Um, and I think, you know, you look out in the, there's, there's not one company in that hall out there, in the exhibit hall, that I wouldn't, well, maybe one, but that I wouldn't be embarrassed to own. Um, and that's sort of how I judge my portfolio. So it, it, you're, you're here at the right time, I, too, I believe, as well. Now, the hardest part for me sometimes in, in getting a presentation together is actually coming up with a snappy title uh, to kind of to explain what I'm doing. By now, you probably noticed that I've made a mistake here. Uh, I was home late, got back late last night and was thinking about it and said, this is what I'm going to have. So it should read, could it get any worse or better than this? Um, and the answer to that is yes. Uh, and I'm going to go into that. And then we're going to get into the, some, what I consider the more important su supply-demand fundamentals of discovery. And that's what it's really about. I mean, it's always supply-demand. You think in metal supply and metal demand. But we're at a point in time where... It's more about the, the supply and demand of new discoveries. So I want to get into that as well. All right, and th th we know this. This is since 1900, boom and bust cycles into commodities, uh, ex excluding oil. And there have been seven booms and seven busts, according to this fellow's study. So it's cyclical. There's no doubt we know that. Uh, this just backs it up. All right, so let's look at some charts. Does anyone own this? <laughs> All right. This is 1996 to 2000. 99% um, loss. This is Nevson Resources, 17 bucks to 10 cents. And you can see that long, what, three or four year just flatlining. 1996 to 2001. And here it is, 1999 to 2004. This thing went back up from 10 cents to nine bucks. Um, and it's because the world needed discoveries and they made a discovery. Another one, discoveries matter. This is Virginia Mines. Uh, seven years looking at what this happened. And this, this is probably, I think this was the first stock that I bought when I started ricking, working for Rick Rule as his uh, mining analyst back in 97. And I got there, and this had been a, almost a $4 stock, and I got the opportunity to buy it at a buck seventy-five, thinking this is, this is great. Good guy, lots of cash, good projects, as good as it gets. Um, then it got to a buck, then it got to 65 cents. Now, this is really good. They've got 45 cents a share in cash, and I'm getting it for 65 cents. This thing eventually went down to 35 cents. So you could buy, during the bottom of that bear market, Andre Gaumont, Virginia Mines, with 45 cents a share in cash for 35 cents. And you can see what happened. Uh, Altius Minerals, another one. Look at that long flat line. Uh, this is a business model that was, uh, these guys are following. And I think the important part, not just the, you know, the gain that we're here, 10,000% uh, gain, but it, it takes time to succeed in this business. Exploration and the business of it, it's not something that happens in four months. 
It's, it's science. Uh, it's formulating concepts, testing those concepts, and reevaluating what you're doing to find something. Uh, another one, first quantum. And I'm, I'm using these because these are actually ones that I bought and did well on. I didn't buy at the bottom, I didn't sell at the top, but this is what happens when people execute their plan or make a discovery coming off the bottom of the market. Now look at that's, you know, it's 97 to 2002 before anything happened. Uh, okay, so here, here's the mining industry in the four and a half year performance. Um, what I'm showing here is the gold, uh, which is GLD, which is down 16%, uh, 38 from the peak. Copper miners down 51, small miners down 85%. And I threw in the Exploration Insights portfolio as well, how we've done. And up in, this is up until the end of last week. Uh, we were up 3%. Last week took us down to negative 3%. Um, and I, I bring that up not to brag, I think I was just, you know, there's a lot of luck in there and a couple of discoveries, but my letter's about what I'm doing with my money in this sector. So I'm extremely cautious with what I buy and sell, and I've got some very strict guidelines as to what I do. All right, so it's bad out there, really bad out there. And the question is, okay, so it's bad. We've seen the stocks come down, the prices come down. What are mining companies doing or how are they reacting to this decline? They're slashing sustaining costs. Um, let's talk about sustaining. Sustaining costs is what you spend to keep your business going. If you're slashing sustaining costs, you're killing your business. You're, you're going out of business. And this is up until last year, uh, the CapEx down 40%, and it's down about another 30% in 2014. So they're not building new mines, basically, is what they're doing. They're holding off. Uh, they're gutting their deposits. The easiest way to increase your profitability at a mine site is to increase the grade you're mining, increase the dollar per ton value of it. Uh, the long-term trend you can see, grade since 2001, is down 45% up until uh, 2013. So what that means is as the price rose, the gold price rose, they started mining lower and lower grade. That's why the profitability didn't, didn't happen that we we're expecting. Uh, here you can see over the past two years, there's an uptick in the grade of what they're mining, the uptick in the, the dollar value of the rock they're mining. That's what they're doing to try to um, increase profitability. And I call it gutting the deposits. And I think it's important to understand what that really means, high grading. And so here's a real life example of a deposit in West Africa. The top slide shows the original mine plan. The red being the highest grade, then pink, and then, then the orange. In the original mine plan, they were gonna mine four million ounces that graded 2.1 grams a ton. But they needed to increase the grade, increase the possibility. So the second uh, slide down there, and this is a cross section through the ore deposit. What they've done is they've high graded it. So that blue line they're now mining 2.8 million ounces, grading four grams a ton, making more money at that. But look what happens. 1.2 million ounces of what used to be their reserves is now grading 0.9 gram a ton, and it is no longer economic. So these are very short-term fixes that they're doing, and, and this, is, this, this is interesting. You need to understand it. That's what's going on. They're gutting their reserves. All right, they're also not exploring. If you don't explore, you don't make discoveries. Here's ex exploration expenditure uh, and what it's been doing. And you can see it was cut to th about 33% in, in 2013 and about the same in 2014. And this year, it'll be about the same. So they're not exploring. Again, sustaining costs. Uh, exploration is an expense. Uh, and it's not something that you can really throw your money at. Or they can afford to throw their money at if they're not making money. So not exploring. And this is the result. Um, what this slide shows is all the number of metal discoveries since 1975. And you can see a clear trend. And these are all, this is lead, zinc, copper, gold. Uh, discoveries are down. There's reasons for that. I'm going to go into that in a bit. Um, let's look at gold specifically. This is uh, the, number, the ounces discovered 
by year. Uh, the darker brown is actual discoveries and the, the lighter color are what this group, SNL, estimates are discoveries that really haven't been announced, but they're in the making. So this takes into account what we think we're going to find, what's being found right now that's not being accounted for in this slide. And again, you can see it's just down. It's been down a long time. In um, 1994, in the 1990s, what happened was the, the whole world opened up to exploration. We could start looking in Africa, Eastern Europe, a lot more places in South America. So as geologists, we could walk, we could go to a, a project, do a bit of research, walk onto a, um, the ground, and actually make a ground sitting, a, a discovery sitting at surface. That, you know, that changed. We found all the things, not all of them, we found most of the ones sitting at surface, so it's getting tougher. And you can see what's happened since then. Um, expenditure, production, about 90 million ounces a year is how much what mine production is, and you can see the, the dark line going across the center. That's been more or less consistent. But look at this. There's a 40 million ounce gap between what we're probably finding and what we're producing. 40 million ounces, that's been going for a while. So we are not replacing what we're finding. And this is what it looks like. Uh, the entire production uh, off the Carlin trend is about 90 million ounces over the past 30 years since it was discovered. There's about 17 mines on there. Um, so visually what we have to do is find and put in production one Carlin trend every year. Ain't happening. And to do this, you've got to consider, well, what's it going to cost to do that? And what's it going to cost to drill this out, do the work, to build the, the mill, build the plant, build the infrastructure? It's just, it's, it's physically impossible. I think that's one of the main points I want to make here. It's physically impossible for us as an industry to replace with new, new discoveries what we're mining. And that's really good news for us. Uh, peak gold. Uh, Adrian showed this slide. I do as well. And what you see is the peak gold discovery in 1995, and we're getting peak production about 20 years later. And that's sort of how long it takes on general to put these things into production. And I want to emphasize, we're not, it's not peak gold. It's not like we're running out of gold. There's, I forget, 7 billion ounces of gold in the ocean. Um, what we're running out of is economic deposits. We're not finding enough large ones. Uh, this is a study done by uh, RNC, even of those found since 1950, less than half of the metal the deposits discovered have gone into production. So even the ones we're finding are not going into production for a variety of reasons. Uh, most are stalled. Uh, they're not economic. They're social issues, political issues, financing issues now. Um, again, bottom line, economic discoveries are going to be extremely valuable. I went through a list of SNL uh, deposits. Of, there are 135 deposits they show. I pulled out the companies that I felt that there were single property uh, companies and looked at those deposits and you know, kind of tried to get an idea which one of those I think are truly you know, profitable or might work. Uh, and that's what I came up with. And I want to draw your attention to this. Out of those 20, 28 deposits there, the estimated net present value of the deposits they own is $15.3 billion. And that's based on the, the various technical studies in that. And I would put a big asterisk by those technical studies. Uh, half of them are probably illegitimate. But anyway, that's what they're worth. The capex to build these things is about $20 billion. And the combined market cap of these companies is 2.1 billion, and this is, this is probably month, month old, so we're, <laughs> we're below $2 billion in market cap on these. And you'll see that's highly skewed by the uh, Predium's Bruce Jack deposit, which um, they've, they've got the highest market cap. So even if, even if these deposits were economic, and I'm not saying they are, we've got an industry with less than $2 billion combined market cap that's got to raise $20 billion to build these things. Not going to happen. 
And here's how long it's been taking to build these things. This is for the larger deposits. You can see from 95, uh, what they estimate out of 2017. And, and the point here is it's taking longer and longer to build these things for a variety of reasons. Um, I would say now from de discovery to development of a decent sized deposit, you're 10 to 20 years if things go right. And the reasons are it's, it's you know, in, increased regulatory environment, increased social risks, political problems, environmental, technical. Technical is a big deal. Uh, the deposits we're finding now are generally deeper, uh, more metallurgically complex. You've got to deal with a lot of other issues that you wouldn't have to with a deposit sitting at surface. And financial, we just talked about that. And here's the production profile of the top seven gold mining companies. Uh, the first line there is, is today, 1995, and this is 10 years out, what their production profile looks like, so the top seven companies. Let's go back. 20 years to build it. They're, out, they're, they're running out of ore in seven years. This is good. This is really good for those of us that are out here looking to own companies that are going to find stuff. All right, so think about this. If average mine grades are declining, yet demand is increasing, tons mined have to increase substantially. New mines have to be built, but money's tight, discoveries are down, production timelines are up, and development and exploration are being slashed. What's the solution? I think you know what it is, but this is what the mining industry is doing. <laughs> this is inexpensive, but I've tried it and it really doesn't work. All right, so the real solution is we've got to find more ore. But let's, let's talk about some realities, why it is so hard to find new deposits. Um, you know, in, in, on, on average, if you just take all the prospects out there, one in a thousand is going to result in a deposit of some, th some value, and one in 10,000 is going to be a, a truly economic a major discovery, a major tier one discovery. Um, those odds are interesting, but we can, re you know, we can really improve on that with a bit of research. But what's going to happen here is that just, just how the earth works, for every two and a half gram deposit that the earth forms, there are 10 one gram per ton deposits. That's just the odds, more or less. Therefore, when we're exploring, we're going to find 10 low grade deposits for every one good deposit, one, two, one higher grade deposit. That's just how it's going to work out. Now, if you're drilling undercover, and deep, down two, three hundred meters to find something, a one gram deposit's not going to make it. You need a two and a half gram or better. So the dilemma is where it's costing more to drill these things. The metallurgy of those things are generally more complex because they're sulfide and refractory, that sort of thing. If you're looking at an open pit, you've got a lot of waste to move around. That's expensive. That's, that's your upfront capital costs. Uh, water. Water's an issue. Either there's too much or not enough. You're disturbing a huge area. Uh, comp the, the permitting is much more complicated as well. Your capex is higher. So the question we need to ask these guys out there is, really, how much is it going to take you to disprove your deposit? All right, so this is, this is one of my favorite. This is my, uh, what I call my Where's Wally Waldo slide. And what it really is, is it's a hypothetical cross-section through the earth, a subduction zone where the oceanic plate is dropping beneath the continent, sort of like what's happening in the Andes. And what this shows is all the different environments where you could get a gold, gold copper deposit. And each, each of the red ones are different types of deposits that we as geologists go out and look for. So that's all the different possibilities of deposits in that geologic setting, a subduction zone in Andean mountain range. So that's what we're looking for. That's the reality on the ground. Huh? So, <laughs> it's tough. And then, here's, here's a section, not exactly the same place. That previous picture was from a project I looked at on the Andean-Ecuadorian border, uh, Peruvian border. Um, and this is drill holes through a deposit, and that's, that is one kilometer of that bar. 
Now, the, these are drill holes through the section. The, the uh, colors represent grade. So the yellows, the reds, the purples, those are high grade. Now consider, how would you mine this thing? To mine something, you, you need to have continuity. You need to go in and, and be able to know where you're going and pull this together. So this is, this is, these are complicated deposits, even if you're successful. All right, so as speculators, we need to really recognize success and failure as, as soon as possible. And that's what my, I spend all my time doing almost is, besides playing volleyball, is uh, I look at a project and I want to, as quickly as I can, kill it. And that's what we need to do. We know the odds are bad. Our job is to lose as little money as we can and move on to the next one. And that's what companies should be doing too. So you need to know the funding requirements. I'm going to go over this in my workshop uh, later today because there's a lot to go through here and we're getting down on time. Um, and we'll go this in a bit more detail, a few stock picks as well. But you need to know what it's going to cost. You need to know and they need to know what the no-go, no-go points are. When do you know when you're succeeding and when do you know when you're not? Uh, the economic parameters. What's it going to cost to build this thing if you find what you're looking for? Uh, what's the geology look like? Uh, social and environmental limits, and bottom line, does, if you're successful, will it translate into an increase in the share price? If it doesn't, there's no point in us putting money in it. Too many of these companies, even if they're successful, the share price might go down, but the market capitalization goes up. That's great for the brokers and people financing them, but the share price goes down. They increase the, the value, but not the share price. So it's good out there, really good. This is Mariana Resources. Uh, they're out there in the hall. On Monday, they put out a release just for you all. 83 meters grading 13 grams gold and 2.2% copper. Translating that into today's value, dollar per ton value, that's $575 a ton. That's very rich stuff. And the stock was down two pence. The reason I'm saying this is good is this allows us the time to evaluate results, make an investment decision without the stock running. So this is, this is good for us, I think. I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's too bad. You own the stock and you lose, it's going to be great. <laughs> and it's gonna, you're expecting an increase in the share price. You don't get it. But on the other hand, we can buy these things really understanding what's going on. And we'd better understand it, because if it doesn't work, there's no one going to buy it from us. Another one, reservoir minerals. 84 meters of 10.8 grams gold, 10% copper. That's $920 a ton rock. Extremely valuable. And here's a company, here's their one-year share, share price, that during the year, their joint venture partner, Freeport, has committed to spending $18 million bringing this forward at zero cost to reservoir, and you can buy it today for what it was selling a year ago. And we've got all this, all this more data, all this more certainty, this thing's being de-risked. Um, and this is what it looks like. This is the, a quick cross-section through the deposit. It's a blind discovery, about 450 meters beneath the surface, um, very high-grade core to it. A fantastic joint venture with Freeport. Uh, Freeport carries them through a feasibility to earn 70%. And a feasibility on a project like this, if you're looking at a bulk tonnage underground, could cost you know, upwards of $100 million. Uh, if they're successful in finding the porf a por economic porphyry beneath this thing, we're looking at over $100 million just to do the feasibility study on these things. And these guys are carried. It's not going to cost them a dime. Great location, uh, great resource. Uh, company's got $35 million in the bank, I think it is. So they're not in any trouble. Uh, and they're continuing their business plan, which is acquiring uh, new projects, virgin projects, through the uh, Eastern Europe that you know, they will vend out again. And they've got no competition. So this, this is a great company. I mean, it could go lower, sure, but my bet, this is one of the very few deposits out there that is going to be in extremely high demand. 
and be a lot more valuable than it is right now. And my, my study, I, I, I've got a spreadsheet on it, very rough. This thing's worth uh, about 750 a share to Reservoir right now, and that's not counting any success in the porphyry. Uh, generative exploration. Nobody's really doing generative exploration. Uh, problem we have here in Canada with Canadian companies is too many of them go out, pick up an old project that's been drilled by somebody else, uh, put another hole into the best one to see if it's still there, and hope to raise money and get off their stock. Uh, Mirasol Resources doesn't do that. They've been successful, they've proven it. I've been on almost all their projects. Uh, 37 million market cap, 22 million in cash, so that's about 15 million enterprise value. You've got Yamana spending two million bucks this year on a virgin project they turned up in the high Andes. Uh, they can earn 50% for 10 million plus two million payment, and they can get it. Yamana can earn up to 75% by, by making a decision to mine a deposit of such and such characteristics. Uh, that's a fantastic deal, and it's not costing us a dime, and we're getting it for 15 million. And this is what it looks like. Um, in the foreground, the, uh, you've got your, we'll do some geology here. This is a high sulfidation epithermal system. Basically, it's the very top of the guts of a volcano. The volcano's been eroded. So this is what it looks like on top. That's generally, it's barren. It's been altered. It's got some geochemical characteristics, but that's barren. And what their target is beneath that, one to 300 meters, are, is where the gold could be, and that's what's going to be tested. Uh, I like this. I like the, the odds here, uh, and I think your downside is pretty minimal. All right, so takeaways. Mining cyclical. We know that. Uh, discoveries, exploration, everything's collapsing. I think th this whole supply-demand uh, uh, concept is important in that I don't care what the metal prices do over the short term. What I know is that the supply of new deposits is not going to meet the demand uh, that these mining companies are going to need. And that's, that's eventually going to prove to be really well for us, uh, really profitable. And own the best, only own the best, and cut things as quickly as you can. If it's not working, get out of the way. All right. So. I've got a workshop today at 2.20 in the Vancouver room. The afternoon there's the mining panel at 5. And there's a series I just put up, um, I put it in the letter and I put it on my website as well, part one and two. And I, what I did was I went back and looked at the 2000 or the 1997 bust, what it was like, because a, a subscriber, a younger subscriber said, what was it like? Uh, I've only been around since, nine, uh, since 2005. What was the last bust really like? So that's what I went into and I think it's, it's worth having a read to see what, what it was like back then. And those are on my website, explorationinsights.com. Um, have a read. That's all I've got to say. I appreciate your time. Good luck. I think your timing is, is probably pretty well.